How is it going? Tonight I wanted to do a quick video on how to take apart and diagnose your broken trolling motor. Um, most of the time whenever these motors get locked up or stop working, people just throw them in the trash. So hopefully I can help some people fix them. So most common problems that you're going to have with these trolling motors is either a magnet will break loose or bearings are shot or something like that most of the problems that you're going to have are going to be very very fixable um, it's very rare that you'll see that a winding is burnt out and if you what the heck was that It's very rare that you'll find that a winding has burnt out and that the motor really cannot be repaired without being rewound. So really let's jump right into it. So first thing you wanna go, you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna get your prop off. Um, that's most likely where your screws are to get to inside the motor. And in order to take the motor apart, we're gonna have to get the prop off. So mine was a half inch wrench you just take the nut off and I've already broken mine loose so I'll just show you real quick so it comes right off there's gonna be a washer on there and be careful when you're taking these apart because a lot of times or every time there's going to be rubber seals on everything because obviously they have to be watertight so easy peasy there goes your prop props off now you got a little solid little piece of rod that sticks in the shaft there and that's what keeps the prop from spinning on the shaft so you're not going to want to lose that don't lose that okay and then you've got in here you see these two holes so in those two holes i had two screws and those screws were a quarter inch uh, hex head i just used a regular screwdriver with a like a bit driver screwdriver and it took them right out so whatever yours is you're going to want to get those screws out so once you get those screws out then comes the fun part this is where most people either get hung up or quit altogether because they can't get the dang thing apart so they make a fancy tool for that so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put my nut right back on because this is actually going to come in handy so when i put this back on then they've got a fancy little tool called a slide hammer so this is my slide hammer it comes with different attachments that you can put on the end there but basically this part slides inside of the weight and i'll show you how i'm going to use it so you take this and you go on there like that and we're going to want to make sure this is far enough back so you get your two things that are going to basically hook on that nut and once they hook on that nut you'll tighten it all up and then you're going to smack this thing until the, the whole center rotor comes out. So now you can see that's hooked on there and then when I tighten up, when I tighten this, now I've got this all tightened up. And I'll just tell you now what was wrong with this one is uh, the shaft wouldn't spin at all. Most of the time, if your shaft won't spin at all, it needs to be fixed. Uh, if the shaft is really hard to turn, it needs to be fixed. If you can hear, you know, something doesn't sound right, it definitely needs to be fixed. Um, if it's draining your battery really fast and you're not sure why, you probably need to... Come on, dog. Quit. Get out of here. It probably also definitely needs to be fixed so I'll show you how to use this slide hammer give me just a second okay so now I have my slide hammer on here this is all tightened up a little bit and then what you'll do is you'll take you'll take this and you will slide it back and forth and smack on it like that until your whole rotor comes out well hopefully it works better than that
once again there's the seals I was telling you about if you're not wanting to change those you're going to want to be very careful with them um, I would suggest you find you a good tube of gasket maker before you take one of these apart so you can seal everything up as you put it back together looks like my seal is actually going to be pretty good so that's awesome so right away this looks fine um, get some of that crud off of there we'll clean that up make sure the bearings all lubed up good and then from what I can tell the windings are all okay if you see something burnt then obviously there's something wrong you can test your windings by checking them with an ohm meter but usually they're fine unless you see something visually wrong with it if you see something visually wrong with it then I would test further and uh, if you need some help on how to test that uh, leave a comment and I'll be sure to help you out how to do that but most of the time it's honestly going to be okay it's usually something very simple that has went wrong with one of these motors and a lot of it is just the seals go bad and they get crud inside of them and they just need to be taken apart cleaned re-lubricated and then resealed and put back together so this bearing is not too bad but it needs some some greasing for sure so I will go the easy way out and I'm just going to put some oil on there and work that down in there. I might pop the caps off. You can pop the little cap off the bearing here if you're lucky and uh, and go and, and clean it out and lube it up that way too. You just got to have a really small screwdriver or more like a pick. Get you a little set like this and use a little tiny flathead and pick it off and put you some some grease in there not oil you want to put grease in there but for the most part we're going to diagnose this one and this part seems to be fine now when you look inside here here you have a problem that's not supposed to be like that this is one of the permanent magnets most of your trolling motors are going to be permanent magnet dc motors uh, this is not supposed to be loose inside of the casing mine whenever you would turn the shaft I could turn the shaft with the prop on and it would make a click 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 and then it was really hard to turn but that click was this magnet in here shifting and then hitting the other magnet and then being forced to stop and then you're basically grinding the rotor inside the magnets as it's stuck to the side of the, the mat as the magnet stuck to it so you're just grinding it along that magnet the motor will never run like that so um, that's a problem so this is gonna have to be re-glued back down with some really serious glue so I'm gonna be doing that then if you look inside you've got your brushes now the tricky part is is getting the rest of this apart so that way you can get to your brushes and that's going to be the next challenge so it looks like this is just pressed in so you're going to want to be careful not to beat on this too much because you'll break if your one of your magnets are not broke loose uh, or if one is and the other one ain't you're not going to want to beat on it because what you're going to do is break that other magnet loose so don't do that man there's some crud in here that's usually what's the problem guys is just the crud gets in here from them taking in water and believe it or not these things will run for years after taking in water and it just after too long it just eventually starts to build up crap and it'll stop running wow there's really some crud in here anyway next thing is is you've got your brushes in here my brushes appear to be completely froze up so let me give you a close-up view oh, oh Rugo oh, dogs right up under me okay what we have in here there is the brushes 
see when I pulled that rotor out those brushes in there if I can get this thing to stay still those brushes right there that's a brush and that's a brush those slide up and or they slide around the commutator ring which is right here and that's what puts the current to the rotor so in order for this motor to work these here have to be able oh sorry give me just a second those have to be able to freely slide back and forth like this so that way as they wear they constantly have pressure onto the rotor that spins and this one here needs to be able to constantly move back and forth and if you see that spring in there that spring is what is supposed to, oh there it goes I broke it loose see that spring is what is supposed to put pressure on this brush so that way as it wears it is always constantly pressing on the commutator ring so that's very important because if the brushes get stuck they'll have a gap you know like this and therefore they will not get a connection and therefore no power will go to this and no power will go to your motor and your motor will do nothing period it will do nothing uh, so this is probably the number one problem that is wrong with these motors because the crud gets built up in here and your brushes just they get froze up and they won't slide back and forth no more and then after they wear a little bit eventually that you'll let them sit for a little while and then that gap that gap will get in there and then they won't work so this magnet is making this very difficult <laughs> okay so i'm gonna have to fully get there it goes i got it out so you're gonna want to get them out make sure you get all the crud out of there clean it oh, sorry, yep clean all that crap out of there spray it out or whatever you want to do uh, obviously let it dry out before you put it back together and just make sure you can push on that brush up against that spring and that thing should constantly you should as you push in it should when you let off it'll push back out so they should be able to freely slide back and forth in there and then the tricky part is when you're putting this back together you have to hold those brushes in all the way so that way you can slide this part back in there see the bearing the bearing on the end here right there seats inside inside that hole in the very bottom down there in order for that bearing to get in there it has to pass through where those brushes are and if the brushes are working correctly they're going to be protruding out into the path of the bearing so you've got to hold them all the way in which there's a trick for that i'll show you if I can get this the rest of this apart I'll show you but you've got to hold those brushes in all the way carefully slide that bearing past there and then get the commutator ring in between them carefully without breaking the brushes because they're brittle and then once you get it all in place then you're able to let off on your brushes so they can go up against that bearing like they're, I mean that commutator ring like they're supposed to and then you put the rest of your motor back together so that is the most important part make sure when you're putting these back together that you are very careful don't just take this rotor out and then oh bearings are good magnets are good and then shove it right back in there because what you're going to do is you're going to destroy your brushes those brushes are brittle uh they're like think about like the lead of a pencil um that's about like what they are they're just like a you know like a flint in a lighter when you strike a lighter this one don't have one it's an electronic lighter but when you strike a lighter it's got that little flint in there up under that and that flint just constantly pushes up against there and as you as it rubs against it it creates that spark well in this case you don't create a spark you just create a connection between the commutator ring and the brush and that will put current to the rotor of your motor and make it spin this is your field which is your permanent magnets creates the field uh, that's what it's called 
anyway so that's how you diagnose your trolling motor you're going to want to check the brushes you're going to want to make sure the magnets are not broken loose because it won't work and then make sure all your windings on your rotor here all look good and are not shorted out and there's no visual you know obviousness of where this thing has been banging up against the side of the the motor as if your one of your bearings are really shot and this thing is just doing this inside of there because it's not going to work uh, it's not going to work well anyway so that's also very important this thing don't supposed to do this it's supposed to just spin nice and freely and it should this magnet should stay to the outside of this but never touch it so your magnets should be you know like that and never actually touch it so if you can feel whenever you're turning this thing before you take it apart if you can feel that that magnet is rubbing up against your rotor that's what's wrong with i mean that's one of the things that are going to be wrong with your motor you've got to get that magnet uh glued back down so that's what i'm going to do i'm going to clean this thing all out i'm going to make sure those brushes slide in freely and uh, put them back in i'm going to get this motor back or completely apart so that way i can put it back together and then i'm going to put my rotor back in Put this part back in after I glue the magnet back in. Make sure the bearings are all good. Put the cap back on. Put your screws in it and put this thing in the water. Make sure you put your seals back on or get new seals. And uh, use some gasket maker if you can't do that. Because uh, the odds of finding a seal kit for whatever trolling motor you have. If it's an old one like this, you're going to probably be SOL. But if it's a new one, obviously you can probably get a seal kit. But still, not going to be easy to do. So you might have to rely on either a kit. Where did my seal go? You're going to have to get a kit of some kind. Or you will need to just make your own altogether. Well, I don't know where my seal went. So it looks like I'm going to be using some gasket maker too. It's around here somewhere though. I have no idea. Anyway. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that helps somebody. Um, if it's not your motor and you, everything in your motor is fine, you take your motor all apart and everything's fine, then you've got an electrical problem. And that's for another video. This is basically just to show you the basics of how to find out what's wrong with the actual motor. If you think all your electrical is fine and, and that's not your problem, the problem is in the motor because you turn the shaft and it is hard to turn then you probably got a problem with the motor. And make sure you do that test without it connected to the battery. Because uh, when it's connected to the battery, sometimes you can feel like there's resistance on here because you're putting current to it. But the problem is actually a short with the electrical somewhere. So make sure you're when you're not connected to the battery, you're going to want to take your shaft and see how it feels. If everything feels right, especially if you've got another trolling motor you can compare it to, uh, that's good. You know, that always helps, but if you hear grinding, squeaking, or clicking, something's wrong inside your motor, and that's what this video is for. So, I hope this helps some of you. I will uh, get to work putting this motor back together, and uh, there's a trick. Let me go ahead and tell you now. There's a trick to, to holding these brushes whenever you are putting this motor back together. So, you can imagine this part will be gone. And I will just have that. What you do is you take either two screwdrivers or two uh, pieces of thin metal of some kind or even some wire. And you're going to want to basically push that brush all the way in and stick that little piece of metal in there uh, where it wedges inside of... Here, let me get my little handy dandy screw. I'll use the aluminum on it so the magnet don't fight with me. But you're going to want to stick something, so you can imagine if you push this all the way in there, then you're going to want to stick something that's tight right in there just like that. That that stays, but make sure that thing comes out where you can get to it on the outside of the motor, so that way after you get your rotor in, you can pull it out. 
Uh, I hope that makes sense. But basically, you got to hold them them brushes in, and I usually use uh, two screwdrivers or something of that nature, and uh, push them all the way in and hold them. And two pieces of wire work really good because you can stick them in there, and then and then uh, as you push as you push your bearing in. You can imagine you'll be holding your brush like this. Well, that bearing will rub up against this right here and constantly push on your brush as you push it in. So it's kind of like a, a safety. Well, that way you can never, because what you don't want is that brush to be sticking out here like this. You can imagine this is your brush here. And your brush is going to be sticking out like this, and you're going to shove that shaft in there. And it's going to hit that bearing right there, and you're going to destroy your brush. Don't do that. So make sure you hold your brushes in, put your motor back together, take your time, clean everything really good, and your trolling motor will be back in action. Good luck. Appreciate it. Don't forget to like and subscribe.